Not only world famous for its Cantonese classics, Hong Kong is also renowned for its unique baked goods, and arguably the most famous traditional Hong Kong confectionery of them all is the pineapple bun. This sweet, crunchy, fluffy snack is a staple of Hong Kong's traditional Cha Cha Tang cafes, and is so ubiquitous that you'd be hard-pressed to walk even a couple of blocks in the city without seeing them in all their crusty glory lined up in a cafe or bakery window. Being so common, one might presume that it would be hard to distinguish one pineapple bun from another, but the buns from one particular Kowloon cafe are so well regarded that they are consistently named the best in the city by locals young and old. The place I'm talking about is Kamwa Cafe, a buzzy cha chanting in the heart of one of Hong Kong's most authentic neighborhoods. And today, this is exactly where we're headed to try their pineapple buns and other delights and soak up the down to earth local atmosphere. This is Sam Eats It. Hey guys, thanks as always for joining me. Today we are on the border of Mong Kok and Prince Edward and I love this area because it's just so authentic, just so down to earth and it just has so much character. And Kamwa Cafe behind me where we're about to head into apparently epitomizes all these characteristics of the neighborhood. These guys are locally famous for a couple of things, but of course their headliner is the pineapple bun. Uh, but before we go in there and devour one, as well as some of the other items on their menu, let's at first talk about what is a pineapple bun and where did it come from? Well, despite their name, pineapple buns actually contain no pineapple at all, zero, and are actually called so because of their crispy, thick crust that comes out of the oven all cracked and looking like the outside of a pineapple. As far as where they came from, there are a number of competing theories, but one is that they derive from a kind of Shanghainese bun that spread south and then eventually ended up in Hong Kong. And by the time they'd reached here, like so many other Hong Kong foods, they had evolved into completely their own thing. In this case, a sweet crunchy bun with a soft inside that in 2014 was listed as one of the city's intangible cultural heritages. The pineapple bun became a hit in Hong Kong in the 1940s, and due to its deliciousness and cheapness, it remains to this day very popular with locals and even the odd foreigner. So with that being said, let's go and see what all the fuss is about, shall we? Let's do it. Bolo Yao Yin Yang Yin Yang Yamo Yin Yang Ah Dong Gum Guy No set, no set for all, just individual, okay? Okay, I'm got it. I'm got it, thank you. Okay, I think we've I think we've managed to order. They do have this uh, pretty nice English menu, uh, so that's a definite plus. We ordered, what did we order? We ordered a pineapple bun. Uh, Hong Kong style French toast and egg tart because we're at a Cha Cha Tang and you know you've got to try their egg tart and some uh, yin yang uh, which I'll explain it's kind of like a tea coffee drink I'll explain what that is when we get it so now yeah uh, let's just uh, wait for our food uh, pretty cool in here ah um guys I thank you thank you mm, looks good um guys I thank you thank you um guys I wow so we've got our stuff looks absolutely Incredible. Great. Let's do this. First of all, let's start off with our pineapple bun or bolo bao. Uh, but actually, technically, uh, this, uh, what they're famous for here, is not a bolo bao, a pineapple bun. It's a bolo yao, which is a pineapple bun with uh, butter in it. And here it comes in the form of this really lovely, uh, nice slab uh, that looks super decadent in between the two halves of the bun, it looks absolutely to die for. Now, as I just said outside, uh, pineapple buns, even though they've got this colorful name, uh, it's quite misleading because they don't contain any pineapple at all. And actually the raw ingredients traditionally for that cookie-esque crust are really simple and kind of on the bland plain side actually. They usually consist of nothing more than flour, baking soda, sugar, eggs, and lard, and that's it. So these are traditionally eaten in the morning for breakfast. Uh, we haven't made the morning. It's almost afternoon tea time, which is also a traditional time to eat your pineapple bun. Uh, so you know what, enough of talking. This is like so 
tempting. It smells so nice and sweet, and it's so hard yet soft and buttery. And oh, let's just try this. Let's try it. Mm. Mm. Oh my. Oh, that's really, really nice. First thing that I get with the crust, it doesn't come apart when you bite it. It stays intact and just crunches under the pressure you teeth. That's a good thing because it allows you to get like, in one bite, you get the crunchiness of the crust and then you sink into the soft, fluffy sweetness of the bread below. And then that butter, mm, which is kind of cold compared to the, um, the, the warmness of the bun. Just adds a super nice contrast. You've got sweet, savory, buttery, crunchy, soft, all at the same time. That is lovely, super decadent. And you know what? Yeah, you can totally tell why this pineapple bun and this place are so well loved. Absolutely gorgeous, oh my God. Oh. Mm. So, um, usually, for those of you that watch a lot of our videos, you will uh, tend to have a trend of, uh, I'll do all the food and then drink all the drinks, so I'll drink all the drinks and then eat all the food. But here, we're gonna switch it up a little bit, uh, because right now, honestly, after that uh, plate of absolute decadence, I need to wash uh, the sweet flavors out of my mouth to actually, no doubt, leave room for some more. We've got, I mean, we're talking Hong Kong French toast and a dan tart egg tart here, so there's more decadence to come. But let's wash it out. We've got this yin yang, which is a really, really special drink in Hong Kong. And uh, yin yang, in Cantonese, it literally translates as mandarin duck. A mandarin duck? No, there isn't any duck in it, I promise. It's nothing to do with actually having duck in it. It's more that mandarin duck uh, they are monogamous birds that often in the wild, they're very beautiful and they're often seen that together they mate for life and they just hang around together. So they're seen in Chinese, Cantonese culture as like the symbol of a perfect marriage. And that refers to this because it is a mixture of coffee and milk tea. The perfect marriage. I really like that name, it's super sweet, isn't it? Um, so the origins of this thing, uh, there's a really famous Gai Pai Dong slash Cha Cha Ten in Central called Lan Fong Yuan. Uh, and they claim to have come up with this drink in 1952. There's no way of verifying it, but the things that we do know about this drink for sure is that traditionally in places all around town, uh, it's usually done with three parts coffee, seven parts milk tea, and uh, it's extremely popular. So let's give it a try, shall we? That is really, really nice. You know what? I've lived in Hong Kong for what? Three years now, almost, and I've never properly had a cup of this stuff. I'm pretty sure I've tried it somewhere along the way because that taste is really familiar. I've probably had a little bit of my wife's one time even at a Chan Chan Tang or something like that, but that is really nice. The, the first notes that you get are completely milk tea. It's very milk tea-esque. And then that kind of that bitter, earthy coffee notes just like come in and kind of rush in at the end and it just gives this really interesting complex little interplay of the flavors i will actually say that the name is right this is the perfect marriage and very sweet too mm. Now let's move on to the Hong Kong French toast that we ordered. Uh, now, French toast in Hong Kong, as with so many other Cha Cha Tang foods, French toast obviously has a Western influence. Uh, but in true Hong Kong style, it's been made to be a truly unique thing. And they do that by not just deep frying it, uh, but between the two slices of bread that invariably constitute Hong Kong French toast, they always have a decadent filling. And the most common one, and the one that they've got here, is peanut butter. And uh, I've just had a little look in there. It looks and smells amazing. So what is customary to do uh, with French toast in Hong Kong, like it is in all places, is to absolutely soak it in maple syrup and then enjoy. So you know what? That is exactly what we're gonna do. Let's do this.
Oh, that is so. Oh my god. Oh, I don't even know what to say about this. This is it's just so decadent. Deep fried, full of maple syrup, and then peanut butter as you get in the middle of it. Ah. That is an absolute treat. You're going to have to splash me with some of the yin yang or some of the tea because I'm about to be in a food coma after this, I swear. Oh my. Mm. Yeah. Everything you could possibly want, like the ultimate decadent treat. It's got the little bit of crispiness from the deep fried, uh, the sweetness of the maple syrup, which you obviously add to choice. I chose to do it in a big way, that's why it's so sweet. And then inside you have that savory, earthy, nutty, peanut butter kind of charge to it and it just all kind of coalesces to make this heavenly, heavenly snack that will make you very fat if you eat it too often, I guarantee it. <laughs> kind of worth it though. Yum. And now let's get on to the egg tart, the Dan tart. Um, I always get these these days and you know what they are they're pretty simple creation but they're just they're so good you can't really go wrong with an egg tart so uh you know we've had some really 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 good egg tarts in some of the past episodes of sam eats it um let's see how this one compares that's really good lovely and light sweet crumbly um, it's not the best egg tart that I've ever had, I'm not going to say that, but, you know, it's it's a good egg tart. It's lovely and sweet and a nice snack to round off this incredible meal. Cheers. So, we are finished. And to say that I'm stuffed is actually a bit of an understatement, oh my god. Uh, that is probably the sweetest, the single sweetest Cha Cha Tang journey I've had. But the food was just incredible. The pineapple bun, so sweet, so crunchy, so soft, so fluffy. Uh, and honestly, yeah, you've got to give it its due. It probably is. It's definitely up there. Probably the best that I've ever tried in Hong Kong. So it's really no wonder that the locals go gaga over this place in general. I mean, the atmosphere is incredible. You can see how busy it is. Like, it's just packed out to the rafters. And uh, yeah, the food, the, uh, the French toast was amazing. Super decadent. The egg tart was pretty good too, really like that, they did a good job of that. And obviously the drink was really good as well, you know, you can't fault it. So uh, I'm going to finish the last couple of sips of this and then we're lucky enough to have an interview with Donald, who's the founder's son and the general manager these days. And he's agreed to talk to us just a little bit about this cafe and just tell us the story, the history, maybe even the future. So you know what, come on, let's go and see him. Hello, I'm Donald and I'm the general manager of Camera Cafe. My father started this place back in 1973 with two of his friends and um, since then other stakeholders moved abroad or already passed away and uh, my father recently retired about two years ago and now I'm the one who look after the day-to-day -day business. The nostalgia will come to mind um, because we have such a long history and we are famous for two of our items uh, pineapple bun and uh, milk tea and uh, people do come here often for these and um, other people come back and kind of tell me that they grew up uh, eating their food for the last 40 years which is quite nice to hear. Uh, this neighborhood Mong Kok, Prince Edward is very unique, very local. Um, I don't know whether you guys been to Central is more metropolitan, multicultural, but I think Kowloon side, especially Mong Kok, um, Prince Edward area, is really just local. And we get all sorts of demographics here, the kind of middle class to kind of, you, you will see celebrities here. And um, I think it's a good mix, and uh, it's really hectic sometimes. Uh, you can see it's really compact. But yeah, I think it's a genuine Hong Kong, people see. As for the future of this place, first of all, I make sure it runs smoothly and we are make our foundation even stronger. And hopefully we can expand to more than just one store in Hong Kong. All right, 
Thank you very much, Scott. Pleasure. Take care. Take care. Bye bye. bye, -bye. That concludes our trip to Kamwa Cafe. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and if so, make sure to like, subscribe, and share. And of course, let us know in the comments where you'd like us to visit next. Thanks for watching, and until the next feast, take care and stay hungry.